Today, we're going to be talking about twins. It starts opening up like a whole new world when it comes to looking for structures and patterns in crystals. I actually don't hate Monday mornings. I like getting up, I like getting in my car, I like going to work. Because there's so much optimism. It could be the best day ever, you never know. What do you get when one is two? Three? Is this a riddle? We're talking about twins. Because these are twinned crystals right here. You can see the crystal like splits off. So this is a episode about why you get a twinned crystal. Do I have a twin? I actually, I don't have a biological twin, but I think a lot of people at JTV would say I did have a twin. I have a work twin. Oh my gosh, that's Elizabeth. Elizabeth is my work twin. I think Elizabeth and I are twins because we both have brown hair. We both like the outdoors. We both like rocks. We both like animals. And I feel like some twins will finish each other's sentences. So today we're gonna to talk about some different kinds of twins. So this is a twinned selenite crystal, and you can tell it's a twin because you can see right where they would be back to back if they were growing normally. So a twinned crystal is when you have two crystals that are conjoined in some way that is either along an axis or a plane that increases the symmetry of the crystal. How do twins actually form? Like what causes a twin? So twins can generally be formed in three different ways. You can have growth twins, transformational twins, and deformational twins. So growth twin is just, there's an interruption during the growth of the crystal and you have basically a copying error. Transformational crystals is when as crystals growing, you suddenly have a change in the temperature and pressure that they're growing at and you have this change in the way that the crystal lattice is growing. Deformational twins means that while those crystals were forming, some kind of stress caused them to deform and create planes of twinning. Generally though, what we're gonna concentrate on is growth twins, because these are the ones that you guys are gonna see out in the market. They're the ones that you are going to be able to tell from photos. So I've got two new boxes here. Let's see what's inside. So we've got a fluorite and an awesome calcite. So not all twins are the same. So there's actually a ton of different types of twins. We're gonna draw today too. So a lot of you guys probably learned about DNA in school and how they create a pattern. With crystals and how they grow, imagine you have a line of code. So we're gonna go A, B, C. Here we've got our initial pattern. So now we go A, here's our error, C, B, A, C, B, A. So this would be our copying error. This was along a face of a crystal, and this is one crystal and this is two crystal. This would be a mirror plane. You have two images that are essentially the same thing, but they mirror one another. So say you have your selenite crystal that you guys saw. So there's one crystal and there's your mirror of the other. This is in fact a three dimensional plane that extends through the whole crystal. You can get where you have a 180 degree rotation about a particular axis. And that's not exactly the greatest drawing on the planet, but if you guys envision this, that point would be right there coming out of the dry erase board. And so it is a 180 degree rotation around that axis. We're looking at real life representations of those. So we have what's called a penetration twin. Florets from England are really famous for their twinning especially penetration twins. Got this square face on this crystal, and then you have coming out of that face another crystal. And if you notice those angles that they come out, it is cutting across the face 
of the opposite crystal. So that's how you can tell that you have a penetration twin. It's not just they're back to back, they actually cross cut one another. Then you've got a contact twin. They are one of the more common calcite twins that you can come across. You would think that this is actually the twin plane, is this line right here, and it's not. You have to look at this, what is called a reentrant angle. This crystal would be complete on the top, and if it extended past this matrix, you would have a complete crystal that mirrored it. This is what we call a contact twin. This goes across a mirror plane where they contact together at the center. That angle right there, that V angle, shows me that this crystal is in fact a twin. So we've talked about our contact and penetration twins. Let's take a look at some of these really cool patterns that all occur because of these two types of twinning. This is a cyclical twin. This is actually a little alexandrite crystal, and you can see why it's called cyclical. It looks kind of like a little wheel. These are contact twins that instead of just being side by side because of the shape of the crystal, actually end up making a circle. So here you have your individual crystal barrel crystal. As they twin, because of the angle that it mirrors at, that contact plane right here has to go over at an angle. And as it repeats itself, it actually can complete a full rotation, which is actually really cool. This is another really, really, really famous twinned crystal. These are called fairy crosses. So this is starlight because these crystals do this type of penetration twin so often. It's actually called the starlight law. A law in twinning just refers to basically a twinning pattern that is exhibited so often. They give it a name and it has a set of rules that it functions by. Each of these is actually a single crystal across here. So there is a single point, and so this is how they form. Their penetration point is so close to the center that you don't have just two crystals doing this. That's, that's not how it works. You can actually see where you have this ridge running down the center point that occurs on each crystal. So you can actually tell that they come together at that exact point. You can actually get these twins as well where they're more of a St. Andrew's cross, I think is the one that's more of an X, like this. And it's still considered a starlight law. But this is basically the idealized version and that's why I just really love this crystal. It's a great example. So the next one that we're gonna be doing is a corundum crystal. So corundum are actually famous for something called polysynthetic twinning, where you actually have layers back to back that are all twinned. So today, I am polysynthetically twinned. A striped shirt is actually a really awesome representation of the polysynthetic twinning pattern. You can see it in this crystal. You guys can see these angled lines going across it. So that tells me that this crystal is actually polysynthetically twinned. So you can see this twinning pattern on quite a few corundum crystals. Just some more specimens for you guys to look at. So these are all different quartz crystals. So here we have just a standard penetration twin, smoky quartz. And what's neat about it, you can actually tell where that plane is right almost down the middle. And it just makes such a really clean, crisp, quartz twin. These two right here are two very famous types of quartz twin laws. So the first one is another growth twin. They often have these really flat tabular crystals, which is odd for quartz. What you want to pay attention to is this angle right here. This is about at 80 degrees. So that is indicative of this type of quartz twin and it is called the Japan Law Twin. And this one is probably one of the weirdest twins that we have here today. And it is a Delphine Law. So the Delphine Law is actually a transformational twin. As this quartz is forming, you actually get enough of a change in temperature and pressure that you have a penetration twin that almost looks like a full single quartz crystal. So this is not a twin per se because they are attached in, in an L shape. It actually has to do with each of these two singular crystals. So quartzes can be said to be something called right-handed or left-handed. With a Delphine Law, 
you have two crystals that are both either right-handed or both either left-handed. And the way that you can tell is by looking for certain crystal faces. We know that it is actually a Delphine Law twin because of the way that these angles intersect back into the main part of the quartz crystal. It's a twin in disguise, but once you kind of get the minutiae down, you can start seeing the pattern. There's tons and tons of crystals that people look at and sell that a lot of times they think are a twin, but it's really not. People mistakenly identify crystals as twins so often that in the mineral collecting community, there's actually a meme about it. In this meme, there's a guy and he is like looking jacked. And his friend comes up and he goes, how'd you get to looking like that? You know, what'd you do? He looks at him and goes, I did a single push-up every time. Somebody told me a crystal was a twin, but it wasn't. If that tells you how absolutely common it is. Really, at first glance, this looks like a shoe-in for a contact twin. But what you have here is actually two different growth features. You start off with your darker calcite, which is like your first generation of growth. And then you have your lighter colored calcite, which is a second generation of growth. With twins, they must grow at the same time. So twin crystals can actually fetch some really awesome prices. Japan laws are highly collectible. There's a lot of people that collect quartzes and all their different varieties and all their shapes. So when you throw in twinning into the mix, it just makes it that much better. We're going to look at these two. These are our teeny tiniest crystals that we have seen today. What we have here, this is a penetration twin diamond. Here you actually have two diamond cubes that have intergrown together. I think it's really neat that it makes it almost look like a cyclical twin, even though it is cubic. Now for our second one, this is what is called a diamond mackle, and it is also called a spinel law. When you get a spinel law twin, it's actually an octahedron that if you took it at about a 45 degree angle and then turned it 180 degrees, you actually end up creating this little guy. These are highly collectible. Diamond collectors love oddball shapes of diamonds. It's just really neat to get something that is not only visually appealing, but is like really interesting scientifically. So I want you guys to take a closer look at this calcite crystal. It comes from the faraway lands of Kentucky. So I love the twin on it. And what I also think is really fun is that right there is a shell fossil. When I'm not making videos for JTV's YouTube channel, I'm actually working on the free online resource, the JTV Gemopedia. So this is just an awesome online resource that has tons of information. Go to jtv.com slash library slash Gemopedia. Check it out and let us know what you think. All right guys, tell us what you thought about this video. Leave a twin emoji and like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell. We'll see you next time.